everybody. It's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sharp. And today I'm so excited to be sharing with you this colorful pop art dog painting. This is a really colorful pop art painting of a boxer dog super requested on my channel to go with another painting I had done earlier of a cat. And I really wanted to make sure that you guys got this. So I included it in the acrylic August challenge. Now, maybe you just came here because you thought oh, this dog's cute pupper face and cute boopable nose. And you were just like, I have to paint him. And you didn't know this was part of a 31 day challenge. Uh, it is, of course, you can just do it for just the puppy, but I'd love to encourage you if you're just discovering us this way to take part of the 31 day challenge in August, um, which you can do any month or year that you feel like. If you check the description down below, you'll find resources to the traceable. We're going to want to start with uh, his face on the canvas. I'll be talking about that in the steps, but the traceable is linked down there. So if you don't draw, don't worry, that is provided for you. Um, there's a lot of other links to groups and more information, our art store, all of that stuff. And really, there's nothing to do because this is our mid-month. We are mid-month in the challenge. So right. there's nothing to do but just get our paint, get our brushes, and let's come paint this gorgeous puppy together. Let's go. So the materials for today's class is going to be an 8x8 eight eight canvas that I'm going to be painting on. The colors I have on my palette, it's a very colorful palette today, is dioxazine purple, phthalo green, burnt sienna, cad yellow medium, cad red medium, quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, mars black, titanium white. I may use satin glazing liquid if it's a very dry day. Um, I don't think I have too much blendery to do, but if I do need that and I find it's too dry, I may put that out there on the palette. All right, nothing to do but jump on into step one so we can start having fun. Step one, so at this stage, you would use, you would either freehand the dog in, and you can do that with me when I paint in the black lines, or you would put the traceable on and then go over this with black lines. So I freehanded this in as an idea that I had. <laughs> and so you would use the traceable here. I'm going to go through and show you what I did to sketch this in using black paint. And when you finish either freehanding, sketching, or using the traceable, however you decide to get there, you're going to want to join me on the black paint. Right. So you, you, if you use the traceable, you would get to this point with that pretty quickly. Right. You would, as soon as the traceable is on, you would come to the black paint. So first I'm going to draw the kind of little circle that is the dog's head. A little bump in at the side here. Kind of comes out to the jowl. So I was asked back, this goes actually with this cat that I did. Yeah. That was super popular. Like a lot of people painted it. And then I had a bunch of people ask me for a dog version of the painting. And so I agreed to do one. Let's put a little nose in here on the center. So a little nose shape comes in a little dig down to a little triangle come around a little dig in down to a little triangle and then straight down got a little nose that comes up and around because this is a boxer right could be well i mean it was in my mind it's okay, what i well, looked the... at to make decisions about dogs oh yeah, i was gonna say because like well, I mean, I like, I, I looked at, like, you know, a bunch of different stuff, but the boxers were my primary influence on face faces. It could also be a bulldog or a Boston Terrier. It would be pretty easy to make this a pug or any of those, like, shorter face dogs because the way the face is shaped up. Now I'm going to come off the neck. Neck, neck, neck. Got to give the dog a thick neck. Because this is, this is a strong dog. Now, I love the ears. The ears are going to come up and do a little dip down. And I come out of this. I like to think of it almost like a mountain curve. Little tip of the ear there. I love folded ears. Folded ears. So I like the black lining, too, because when we paint all the colors around it, um, it will sort of peek through. And that will um, really give us a good look in this sort of pop art kind of feeling. So this kind of day, this is a playful day. This gives us a break on our, our work today being somewhat playful. And to go ahead and do a little collar. I almost did a heart, but then I realized, no, this is a dog, so I have to do a bone. You know, so we put a little bone here in a second. Bump, bump, yeah. Kind of curving that around, little parallel straight lines, another little bump. 
come to the far eye. Ooh, I went a little high with that. I'll have to remember to do that on the other side. The thing about your eyes is they don't need to be uh, twins exactly. They have to just be close, closely resembled cousins. <laughs> they need to be patty duped. Right, yeah. Now I'm going to come here and kind of make a little circle in the center. This is where I will try very, very hard to keep from crossing the eyes of the dog. <laughs> I can't guarantee you that they won't cross at some point during the painting at this stage. Now I'm going to want to kind of exaggerate the black here and I'm gonna kind of come up, up there, just making this a thicker line like you do. A little bit here. Kind of a little triangle going up. I like to thicken that little line there and then we're going to kind of thicken this here. And thicken that there. So it's kind of in showing the creases of the little the little folds, right? And then I'm going to want to have a nice little between the eyes. And then another little kind of sort of like the little 11s. Now he's looking a little intense. He's like, <laughs> but he'll end up being cute by the time he's done. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to kind of blend this out. This blending will allow me to create some little highlights and create some different dimensionality to everything. All right. That's like the initial sketch in. So not too bad. Now to do the next part, I do want the entire, oh, you know what I didn't say? I'm using a number six Raphael sepia. I was so concerned about telling everybody about use the traceable first right, or yeah. freehand first and then do the black lining that I forgot to tell you it's a number six Raphael sepia brush round. I will try to make sure that I am better at that when I pick these tools up. Now I'm going to dry this thoroughly with a hair dryer, and when we come back I will show you what we do next. Now I'm going to be working in the background. To do that I'm going to use the three quarter inch Catalyst Princeton angle brush. I just want a nice sharp brush. You could use a sharp bright brush, just a brush that gives you nice edges. I'm going to get it wet, kind of wipe off with my paper towel, and I'm going to start with some bright greens. I'm going to go into some blues and aquas, then kind of over into some purples and blues again. So it's going to be kind of a complex colorful background. Let's start with a little bit of our bright green, which is going to be my phthalo green and my cad yellow. Well, that's quite bright. Let's come down here and where I'm using this, I definitely want to kind of come around the edges of the canvas. You can paint it all the way around or just partially. It's really up to you. Now I'm going to get a little more green in there. Kind of come down the neck a little bit ni nice and neatly. And then I'm going to make my brush be kind of different directions. And you see how I blend on the canvas that way? Now as I come up around this edge, I'm going to bring some phthalo blue down into this mix. And then I'm going to add some white to it. And it's going to take me right into a turquoise. which is always a fun and surprising color mix. Now if I lose any of my lines, I don't worry, they can come back later. 
I'm not going to be stressed about that. I am going to make sure that my turquoise goes around the edges. And then I might get a little more blue into it as I'm coming through. Come tidily up over the ear with some more blue. And you can see I kind of blend that on the surface. I haven't rinsed out my brush. It's just very dirty. Now I occasionally might want to wipe it off with a towel so that I don't have the excess um, pigment. Now I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to go a little bit of my ultramarine blue and blend it into my little turquoise color there. I take a little bit of my ultramarine blue in my quinacridone magenta. I'm still on my angle brush. I haven't changed. Really come around the edges. I think I might get a little bit of my the oxazine purple. Really do the corners. I'm working that in. I'm going to do another color change here. I'm going to wipe my brush off a little bit with my tail. And I'm going to get some of my magenta. And make a magenta purple. So it's more like a burgundy. That complex series of colors going around my puppy. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to want to dry everything and when we come back I'll show you what we do next. So now I'm going to want to come here and do this exact same thing again. I have cleaned my brush. So there's no paint on it. And I'm going to start back over. And this is going to be a little more dry brushy. So this time I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and smidge some green to it. And I'll go ahead and just... Start to weave. Notice that my brush strokes kind of change direction. And get right into a brighter green. And you can see the second layer just creates depth. Let's blend this through here. See, so I'm blending one into wet, creating some nice subtle transitions. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take a little phthalo blue over here into my green until I get back to a nice turquoise. I, I like the background a lot. Yeah, I do too. It's really, it's making me pleasantly happy. Now that's a nice turquoise. Come here with a little bit more phthalo blue and white. And go into a little more ultramarine blue. You rinse out a little bit.
I'm going to make some more purple. It's okay if I get a little white into it so we can really see it. Just a little bit of white though. I'm going to come down and grab a little bit of white over to my docks is in purple. I, I just love how smoothly it kind of blends together and creates this wonderful background. It does. The double layers really help with it. It's impressive. It's uh, We kind of learned a little bit about this when we... I'm going to come right here and just go right into my magenta. We kind of learned about this when we um, did the Rainbow Daisy. Similar concept. So this is an example of where a previous concept is helping us paint a later, more complex painting. And now we have like, we're building kind of a multicolored little background. I don't like this like straight edge right there. So where I have straight edges, I will definitely like come in with like maybe a little bit of my lemon green. And I will just very carefully break up that line a little bit. See how I'm doing? And I can get some just green green. A little bit of turquoise. Maybe a little more phthalo blue, add some white to it so we can see it. So I'm just making sure that our colors There we go. We're creating some interesting layers. Rinse out. Let's take a little altering blue over here and add some white to it. Get a little light purple going now. Maybe a little bit up into the corner. Maybe a little white over to the magenta. Dry brushing and making irregular brush strokes coming back. The other thing that I'll do is I'll carry colors from one zone into another and that just helps it blend a little more. And that's what we're doing is we're making transitions that are less obvious to our eye. All right. That's a pretty decent background that we've got. Let's make sure that yeah, we're... Is, yeah. Covering everything here, like on these edges. It gives a nice tidy painting. All right. I'm going to rinse my brush and put it to the side. Dry everything with a hairdryer. When we come back, I will show you what we're going to do next. So now I'm going to want to put the eyes in a little bit. I'm going to take some glasses so I can see a little better. And I'm going to use my number six Raphael Sepia round again. And I'm going to kind of finish out the eyes. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a nice bright yellow orange. Come in here and kind of paint this with a bright yellow orange. Do the same on this side. Kind 
kind of get them going there. And they're like bright eyes, you know, coming up. I'm going to take my black paint again on my brush and load it up fairly nicely. Come up here and kind of painting that lid down a little bit. Paint in the inner corners here. Just trying to get a nice crisp edge right there. There we go. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. This will give us a little more lid to paint in. He's got some kind of glowing eyes for you. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and I think I'm going to paint in the little nostrils a bit. I often do eyes and nose at similar times just because they're more detailed spaces that I've got to think about. A little bit on the nose there, just kind of creating some shape. He's got his little doggy nose. Definitely make the nice little... I want to give him an area where I can show some tefers. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my Mars black, and I want it to be a little more blue than black. I'm going to go ahead and start to paint in the nose. It's pretty dark at first, but you'll notice that it's got a definite blue cast. This is our gray. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of white. And you come across the top. Gonna get a lot more white on there. Come back and do this once this is dry. But I'm just blending a little bit of gray out there. We're going to come back and do more details. But now that our eyes are dry, we're going to come back and play with those a little bit. Do so you think this is a good place to give it a step? Mm. Are you going to dry it or are we? What do you think? Yeah, let's go ahead and dry it. That way we're not dragging anything across it. Yeah. We'll dry it with our hair dryers and we'll come back and we'll start adding some more details. So we're going to come in and add some lids and some more detailing. One of the first things I'm going to want to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna. And I'm just going to come to the top of the eye. And paint a little bit of burnt sienna across it. Right across the eye, a little bit of the burnt sienna across it. Okay, if I want to come down a little bit into the just painting those there. So I'm getting some eye shadows going. I'm gonna come into my gray over here, as you do. I'm going to thin it with a little bit of water. I haven't even rinsed out my brush. And I'm going to come underneath here. I'm 
some little highlights to his eyes. Just a little bit of highlighting to his eyes. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of my gray and I'm going to come to the front of the nose a little bit. And I'm going to divide the segments of the nose a little bit in half here to get a little bit of water on there to improve the flow. So I'm going to be leaving a dark gray right there. And come across. And a little bit of a doggy nose going on there. Get back into our darker color. I'm going to want to go ahead and get a little of my black onto my brush. Take a little bit of my black and brown together. just the top of the eye. <laughs> Get a little bit of my yellow. Kind of let it pick up some of the orange. Go ahead and get a little bit of my red. A little bit of red sort of coming off there. The eyes are much more colorful than you might think. I'm going to take a little more of my highlight color. I'm going to go into my nose color and add a little white into it. Do a little more shading there. All right. Now everything needs to be dry to do the highlight, and we've got a lot more face to do. So let's dry everything with our hair dryer and come back. And I'll show you what we do next. So I want to paint some of the muzzle now. I'm going to be working in my blues, my thalos, and my ultramarine blues, and my whites. I'm going to get it a little bit wet here. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to bring a little more blue over to that gray mix that I have. The so Mars black, titanium white, and ultramarine blue. I'm going to come underneath here and just very carefully paint in. The chin area a little bit. I'm going to come to this outer edge, start to pull in. Oh gosh, a little bit of this blue. Much like the background, this takes just a couple layers to get there. Add a little kind of shading here. Maybe a little under our nose. Get more into some turquoise. And now I'm going to work into the white.
and go ahead and start to shade that in. Just starting to put the little muzzle in. Lots of colors to do, but we've got to get in the baseline here first. And while I'm at it, I'm going to rinse out. Actually, we can call that a step, but we don't have to dry it. Because that'll be the muzzle, and then we'll come in and we'll start adding in some. So my next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and my cad yellow. I'm going to make some nice orange. I'm going to paint in a lot of orange to start with. Just that first layer of paint. Anything that we lose, we can put back. We can put black back black if we need to. We can put back any colors that we need to. Right now we're just trying to get that first layer of paint in. Come around here and then maybe a little bit under the eye. But as I come down, I'm going to get a little bit into my burnt sienna and some black. a little bit over on the side. You can see I'm kind of just shading that in. And anywhere we need to put lines back we can or colors back we can. Especially in this style of painting. There's a lot of forgiveness. So much forgiveness. It's pretty much made of forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? I do. But I actually very much like how this is coming in. Come right into some orange. Anytime I see some white kind of peeking out, I might come in there and painting around the edges. And that's a good baseline there. Let's grab a little bit of our orange. I'll bring a little bit in here. Then a little bit into the dark brown.
All right. So we have some shadows along the jawline, underneath the chin, in the far left side, and underneath each ear. We've got a nice blue muzzle, nice kind of orange base. Let's dry everything, and I'll show you what we do next. So now I'm going to use my number zero Raphael Textor D brush. You could also use a small bright or small round. I just want something tidy for this space. I'm going to get back into my uh, muzzle color. I'm going to come over and bring some white over to my ultramarine blue. And I'm going to come in and paint the base of my bone. What's that little brush you use on there? This is the number zero, Rafa, number zero Raphael Textor D brush. But you could use a brighter, different brush. Just I just like it for its round shapes and then how it's going to paint inside the... Kind of a thing. And then lastly, I'm going to want... And this will be interesting. I'm going to take a little bit of my dioxazine purple over to my cad red. Make a dark color. Mm, I may not like it for right here. When it's giving me any grief on shapes or turns, I just turn it to its corner. And that's how I'm able to get this brush through tiny, tiny areas, as I don't do it on the wide, I do it on its corner. And kind of rinse that out. And then we come over and get into some yellow green, very light. And we'll take that on the outside edge, maybe a little bit right there, maybe a little more green. Come up over the nose just a smidge. I'm going to rinse out. And I'm going to grab some white. It's okay if it has a little aqua in it. Come here and make a brighter highlight. You can allow what's underneath to show through. Grab a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm going to wipe off my brush on the towel and grab a little more white. A little more white right here. But I'll go into my turquoise, my uh, phthalo blue. Bring a little green turquoise over here. Wipe my brush off with a towel. I'm just trying to create kind of a, a brighter highlight right here. Maybe a little more turquoise. Then a little more blue. I'm just using the D brush as a way to paint it in, but you could use any brush you want. So a little more blue, maybe a little more blue down here at the bottom, around the outside edge. And 
And a little bit of blue right there. I'll wipe it off. Get some white, come to the top of my nose. Get some little white reflections. Might go ahead and grab some of this yellow green from earlier. This was my turquoise with more yellow in it and green in it. And it's just taking it to that more aqua space. Kind of dry brush that in there as well. So it's just very colorful. Very, very colorful. Now I'm going to dry everything with a hair dryer. I'll show you what we do next when we come back. So I'm going to take a small detail brush. This is a number zero Raphael precision brush. You could use anything between a two and a one on a detail brush. You just want something small enough to work a little area. I'm going to get it wet and add some white to it. Come over here and get a little yellow. I'm going to make a very light yellow. I'll load that up in there and come to the inside of this eye. Again, this is yellow, just a very light yellow. Come right here and add the same thing. Just that extra little glow in the eye. Very important. I'm going to take some of my white over to my gray and get a very light gray mixture. Needs to be lighter than the first gray we put down so it comes off as a highlight. I will wipe my brush off if I feel like the paint's getting away from me at all. You know, just a little highlight to that inner lid. Is it important? I don't know. I feel so. Get some white here. And add a little reflection to those beautiful, beautiful little eyes. Some white here. I'm going to add a little reflection right here to our lovely, lovely little nose. Just a little bit of a white pop there. Oh, that looks very nice. We could definitely call that in and of itself a step. All right, let's call that a step with us. We don't have to dry anything. Now I'm going to come down here with my cad red. I'll let a little of my purple get into it, but we're going to go much brighter now. I'm using my round brush, my number six round. Kind of dry brushing so that the burgundy underneath sort of shows through. It just gives some richness to the color. That loosely dry brush that all through there. Go ahead and get a little of my turquoise blue. Just Grab little, some little phthalo blue there. It's just a little dimensionality to the bone. Yeah, much like the little muzzle up there. Grab a little of my yellow. It's kind of similar. We'll come back through and dry brush with some white, but I want a lot of color. To play with that over. Brush that through so that it's kind of interesting. Now while I'm here, I can come here and take my black and my round brush.
Come very carefully. Sometimes I will go through if certain lines are super important and I want them to be uh, heavier, I will reweight them. So by thickening them, I'm reweighting this line. I just wiped my brush with a towel to make sure that there wasn't like a, a little drippy drip of extra water that was going to come and get me. Now some of this will get painted back a little bit as we paint all the other colors in the puppy. But you can see just this little bit of black lining definitely gives it some weight. It makes it pop a lot, yeah. Right through there. So that's a more noticeable kind of area. I might take my little zero D brush and get some white on here. Just dry brush that in. So it's a colorful little bow. Playful. White, but not white. Now everything needs to be dried thoroughly. And we're going to start putting some color throughout the doggy's face. So I'm going to come down into the neck area and I've got my zero D and I'm going to start to bring some color down into it. I'm going to take a little bit of my dark blue. And I'm going to begin to paint. Add some white to it so we can see it as blue. Sometimes when we go over a dark color, we can't really see it for what it is. Come get a little of my magenta in there. Maybe add a little white. Kind of goes a little pink. little pink through here. Just some color, some unexpected, surprising pops of color. Let's grab a little of our green and our yellow together. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow. I just kind of blend that in there. Yeah. Those colors are crazy. Just getting some color going. Maybe a little bit of my burnt sienna and my Mars black. Any little brush that will make, let you make lots of little color brush strokes. That's what you want. Just a little something fun in there. Kind of popping. Now rinse out. Get some more of this color. And make sure that that's at the corner there and fairly well. 
considered around the jowl and maybe like up the side here. I'm kind of come underneath here. Come down the side. I'm going to make this dark through here. Grab a little bit of this brown black and Just a colorful little guy. How colorful? As colorful as he needs to be. I'm going to take a little bit of my cad red and my cad yellow. I like the colors being added in there. Bring that up there. Now sometimes I need to wipe off my D brush. Bring some orange around different places. Come underneath the eye. Let that blend down in. Come around with some yellow on this outside edge. Yellow through these little inner points around the eyes. And he just starts to come alive. He really does. A little yeah. more yellow through here. Let's grab a little of this red. Wipe off my brush. Little black, little brown. It's just a colorful, playful pup. Nice little middle of the month friend, right? Little middle of the month fun. So that, you know, we keep our painting energy up every once in a while. It's important when you're doing a big project like a daily painting that you do stuff that keeps it fun. Really important to do stuff that keeps it fun. And take a little bit of my yellow my white loaded on the edge of my little brush here do a nice little light stroke up nice little stroke down I might kind of a little right there. I might add a little right here. Can add a little white there. Coming over that little area, coming over that little area. A little white and yellow right here. Just creating some shading. Oh my gosh, on his cutie patootie face. Just keep right in together. Keep coming together, isn't he? All right, we got to dry everything. We've got some more detailing to do, but we are really close, guys, to a fabulously finished painting. Are you just feeling it now? Oh, yeah. I'm feeling it. All right, let's dry everything. So I want to add some more bright colors in. I'm going to take a little bit of my green over to my yellow. Get a nice yellow green. I'm definitely going to have to put out some more yellow. I'm going to add some pops here and there. And more saturated colors because I think that that's helpful. I'm going to 
we'll wipe this off and get a little more yellow. There we go. Very yellow green. A little bit green there. A little bit of green there. A little green across the top of that nose. Something kind of under the eye here. Just a little bit of color. pop of green there, a little pop of green there, just something that gives his eyes a little, a little zhuzh. I'm going to take some of my white over to my phthalo blue. Mix a nice turquoise. Because uh, phthalo blue and white is in the turquoise range, even though it's a blue. Just adding a little bit of the just a little something to the center there. I'm going to grab a little bit of my turquoise turquoise. That's the blue with the green in it. I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise right here on the cheek. A little bit to the ear. A little bit of tip on that ear. Go a little more blue. Get a little magenta in there, which will turn it purple. A little purple down there. So the purples are in the deeper shadows. Can always grab a little bit of black. All right, let's get a little of our magenta mixed into that purple and I'm going to come into this sort of under ear area. Just add a little color to that shadow. Yeah, we're adding a little color to the shadow. Go ahead and get a little of my ultramarine blue with white. Because what we don't need is the shadow having nothing in it, you know? You want the shadow to have some color, some substantiveness. I'm going to put a little more yellow out on my palette because my yellow kind of got used up. Just dancing this around. Let's call this a step because we're doing so many little mixes. Yeah. I don't want to overwhelm the uh, Maybook team. <laughs> Understood. So I'm going to dry this and we're going to come back and add some more color to him. He's okay. getting there though. He's so cute. This is going to be one of the favorites I think from the month. So I'm going to add some highlights up there. I'm going to take a little bit of my white. I'm still using my D brush. I could use a small bright too if I just wasn't enjoying this brush. Or small filbert. Just want a small brush that gives me little tiny controlled little brush strokes. It helps me, you know, sit there and think about, you know, making sure that I... And I'm keeping those details. Keeping that little yellow is nice there. I'm 
can go ahead and grab a little bit of my cad red. Adding a little bit under that eye there. A little bit under that eye there. Pop my collar a bit. I'm going to add some red down into the dog as well. So colors can kind of get thrown around a bit. Some red in the ear. A little red in the ear. Grab a little bit of the black on the tip of my brush. Sort of flick that up and then I'm gonna get a little of my purple. Kind of come up here above the green. Add a little purple in there. Maybe a little purple inside those ears. Okay. Let's call this a step and then we're going to come back and do some minor lining on the ears and the body like black lining but not too much because we like some of the areas where it's painted out and kind of but just a little bit just a quick dry just a quick dry and then we'll come back and we'll add some final little details so a couple of places i want to add some final little funny details one of the first final little funny details i want to take my white over to my blue and tone it just a little bit i i want it to be white but not completely bright white and i'm going to come here inside the mouth and I'm going to make a little mark. Because these dogs, if nothing else, have a few little teeth that are always showing kind just of a little, just a little, little personality, little personality in out. the mouth. Yeah. I'm going to grab a little bit of my black, thin it with water. And a couple of places I'll clean up the lines. So coming up over my ear a little bit. I'll put that shadow back in. Notice that I'm just making the lines a little nicer. Sometimes you can do that. Sometimes you can come back through and you can be like, these little lines could be just a little nicer. Just a few little lines to make it all pop, you know, and a few little teefers. Yeah. Teefers are a big deal. They're, they're important. Teefers really matter. When you're doing pet portraiture, that's one of the things to really pay attention to is if there's anything like that going on. That sometimes are the little details that we appreciate in our pets so much. a little bit of personality on those lines where they're not washed out. <clears throat> now one of the nice things here on the bone and the reason that the bone is here is so that if this is a particular dog in your life or for a particular person, you can add the name there as a way of customizing this if you want. If you have good lettering or penmanship, which I do not, but I'm going to work on soon. All right, now I'm going to take my detail brush and come here and get a little bit of my light turquoise. Or maybe I need a darker color down here. Something a little contrasty. Yeah, I'll go into my blue. 
So I try to use colors that are in the painting and I try not to put something here that's disruptive. Don't be disruptive. Well, you work really hard on your art and I always get so sad when I see someone do such a good job on a painting, but then in a wild moment of ego, like destroy the whole thing with the signature. Sure. And I understand that people collect the artist, not the art, like in theory and all of that. But I like to do art that people want to live with in their homes and in their lives. So it's yeah. more about them and the piece than my actual signature. But I do like to have a little flair in it because I have personality. Right. Oh, my goodness. I'm so happy with this. Like, I'm so... uh one of the cool things is is that patrons, you may not know this, get to see these before anybody else gets to see them. And so I get to like be sharing this soon with my patrons and I know how excited they're going to be. And then I think yeah. about how excited you're going to be when you get to see it for this uh, acrylic August. I think it is going to be, I love doing something big mid, big mid month because it's about mid month where you really start to question your life choices. Like, why did you start doing an art challenge anyways? And you didn't know it was going to be this hard. <laughs> right. and, oh my gosh. What were you thinking? Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, Those I want to paint uh... better, but so I like to do something that just brings such joy to you guys during that time of the month. So you get that second win. Now understand in this next week, that's going to be like, think of it as the top of the hill. Like when you're bicycling and you're, you're at the steepest point and you're just, you got in a low gear and you're just like pumping. That's what we're going to be doing. And then as we come into that final run, all of a sudden, oh my goodness, your brain's going to start kicking over. Those art skills are going to start coming in and you're going to be like, oh, we're going downhill now, downhill now, downhill now. And then you're going to be so bummed when it's over. Yeah. <laughs> but this is the little fuel to get you through to the next thing. And I, I think this is one of my favorite paintings I've done in a while and goes so well with the pop art cat. And so um, I'll have to go find the uh, people that requested the dog and let them know that i did it all right you guys i want you to share your version of the puppy with me hashtag acrylic august hashtag the art sherpa online if you check the description below you'll see links to the website materials link to my art store if you want to buy anything that you saw me using in today's show you can buy it from my art store um if you live in north america um i do try to work with things that you can find anywhere though like big na like international brands um uh, the other thing is that you'll see down there, you can go by Facebook and there's a group, the Acrylic April group, because normally I do this challenge in April and you're welcome to share that there. Um, and of course, the Art Sherpa official group is another place that you can share. And both of those groups are curated and they're curated to, to be very nice and kind. So they're really positive spaces. So it's a great place to share your art. The other thing I want you to do is just congratulate yourself for getting this far. Congratulations for getting this far. Pat yourself on the back because it's a big deal. You are here and that is huge because I know what it takes to fit something like this into your life. So thank you so much for your trust in your time. I want you to be good to yourselves and be good to each other and I will see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.